Okay, so once again, <laughs> uh, welcome to the European Breakout Room. Uh, we will have uh, today uh, four organizations that will be presenting themselves. Uh, and we are really excited to hear more about their organizations and about uh, job opportunities that uh, they have in their organizations. And uh, yeah, uh, please, Polina, go to the next slide. Yeah, so before we start, we just uh, ask you to kind yourself during the whole uh, session uh, until uh, until the end, where uh, there will be the uh, Q&A session. You can write in the chat or you can raise your hand and uh, the, the moderators will uh, call you out. Uh, yeah, like as I said, during the event, take the notes and uh, the question and answer session is at the end. Uh, in case of internet uh, connectivity issues, I kindly take note of the Zoom credentials so that you may rejoin the conference. Uh, you should have uh, received all of you uh, the email uh, earlier today with the joining information, so it's the same. Uh, all the event is recorded, uh, so also take note that uh, it's been recorded, it's been also live streamed, and uh, it will be afterwards put to uh, IFSAS YouTube. And lastly, if you have any technical difficulties or issues uh, that we should address, you may message any of the organizers. Uh, for this breakout room, uh, it's me and Polina who are the moderator moderators. So uh, if you uh, need any assistance or any uh, anything, just write to us. And yeah, just to introduce uh, ourselves, uh, I'm Shimon, I'm from Czechia. I'm the membership counselor of IFSA and uh, one of the moderators for this session. Polina? Hi, I'm Polina. I'm based in Denmark at the moment, and uh, I studied here at the University of Copenhagen, and at the moment I'm the head of EFI subcommission. And now uh, the most important stuff. And that's uh, our organizations uh, who will present themselves. It's uh, Connecting Natural Values and People, European Forest Institute, Forest Stewardship Council, and European State Forest Association. Uh, now we will briefly present our presenters. <laughs> so for Connecting Natural Values and People uh, is Kristina Buzaroska. Uh, she is a forest engineer, has a professional experience uh, in uh, sustainable forest management, illegal logging, climate change, and rural development. Her skills include networking, organizational strengthening, a promotion of uh, civil society organizations, research, and project management. Uh, currently, she is working in CNVP as a project coordinator. And what's uh, also interesting for IFSA is that during her studies, she was a member of IFSA and also the regional representative for Southern Europe. You can go next. Uh, European Forest Institute uh, will be represented by Sara Uschiano. Uh, she's, uh, she finished her PhD in July 22 at the University of Valladolid in Spain. Uh, she was focused on mixed forest dynamics with uh, terrestrial laser scanning. And currently, she is the EFI staff in the office located in Bonn in Germany, uh, where she works as a researcher in the resilience program. And uh, for the Forest Stewardship Council, we have uh, two um, representatives, and one of them is brilliant, and uh, one of them is brilliant. <laughs> and um, he's an accomplished professional with over five years of experience uh, with um, within international development. And uh, he supported SDG-related programs and projects with organizations such as UNDP and the German Institute of Development and Sustainability. And currently he works in the marketing and communication unit at the FSC uh, headquarters in Bonn, Germany. And um, the second speaker we have is Marion Carmen. Um, she's a research coordinator at FSC, senior research. Um, and uh, I don't know, maybe if Marion have more time at some point to present um, your background, because I don't have it at, some, uh, at the moment. I don't know if you maybe you can just present yourself right now. Hi, you hear me? Um, yeah, I'm working for FSC since very long. I'm um, 60 years old. So I thought um, when reaching out to the youth, I asked my 
much younger colleague, brilliant to represent the FSC and the jobs, but I'm here for some background information if needed. I had um, many different jobs in FSC over time. And as I wrote in the staff, it's um, for me similar to, to many other people. We, we started with the real work in the forest sector only with, with 30 years or so or later. So um, take your time <laughs> to find the right job and, and good luck with it. Thank you so much. And uh, so the fourth organization that we have is European State Forest Association. And we have Verli, I hope I said it right. <laughs> uh, she's an office manager and at the organization and um, uh, she's a master's degree in translation, English, French and Dutch and started her working career as a secretary in Copa Cocheca, which is the farmer's lobby. And after that, she worked as an independent translator for a couple of years and as a secretary uh, for the fisheries lobby. And, um, and also as an administrative assistant for the European Panel Federation. And since November last year, she's the office manager for the European State Forest Association and for the European Forestry House. And, oh no, too, too early. So then I guess we can start with uh, Christina, right? So uh, Christina, the uh, floor is yours. Thank you for the invitation. It's nice to be uh, after a long time on uh, meeting with uh, IFSA friends. So I will, uh, Present. Uh, I will mention also here. Uh, I will connect with the previous uh, spe uh, speakers that also uh, IFSA helped me a lot in finding jobs because uh, as IFSA member, I was motivated to to contact one of uh, our uh, international angel. At that time, the only angel working in the forestry sector in North Macedonia. Uh, I was volunteering. After that, I start uh, working there, and till today, I'm uh, I'm part of the same uh, organization. So I will share a little my presentation. So uh, I'm presenting, uh, connecting uh, natural values uh, and uh, values and people organization, which is uh, established in 2012, uh, but is follow up, follow up of uh, CMVP uh, organization uh, that is a uh, Netherlands organization. Excuse me, I, I have uh, some problem with my computer can you see good the presentation yes okay so as i said cmvp is uh, a, a dutch based organization and is operating in the in the balkans and uh, it was part of uh, uh, snv previously and uh, People who were working in the forestry sector uh, had established because SNV was closing in that time. So it was uh, open the SNV. At the moment, we are working uh, primarily in the Western Balkan and operating in Albania, Kosovo, North Macedonia, and uh, Montenegro. Our our vision is uh, green uh, sustainable livelihoods in the Western Balkans in uh, harmony with nature and uh, free from po poverty. Well, the mission is providing high quality efforts for environmental protection, combating climate change, uh, managing uh, natural resources, forestry, developing organizational capacity and uh, sustaining green economic uh, growth to improve the quality of life for uh, rural population in the Balkan region. Uh, as I, but the the main uh, focus uh, is uh, the the for, the forestry. 
is one of the most important ecosystem for biodiversity conservation, climate change mitigation, and local economic uh, development. And local economic development. And as I mentioned previously, at the moment we are working in uh, three countries in the Western Balkan, but uh, we have uh, through our work we had established very good connection with forestry expert and. Uh, other uh, local uh, uh, NGOs that are working in the field with uh, in the forestry sector. So very often we are collaborating and uh, implementing a joint project. We are wo working uh, with key stakeholders and partners in the public, private, and civil society sectors at central and de decentralized uh, levels. We apply a team approach that it includes a shared responsibility and uh, the incorporation of innovative ideas in decision making proce processes. Uh, we keep uh, we are keep working to get, uh, together tackling challenges that both nature and people fa uh, face in the rural community, and we're working in uh, six key areas: sustainable forest management environment and climate change, rural development, renewable energy, with focus in uh, uh, wood waste, uh, community mobilization, European access and related uh, and related policy uh, po uh, policies that should be integrated and adopted uh, because we are not part of the EU, but to be become new country where we must uh, uh, how to say integrate the the EU, EU policy in uh, to align the, uh, with the EU policies so uh, as I mentioned previously we had built uh, international uh, international reputation we have 28 employees uh, uh, and we, uh, employees which are uh, professional uh, in uh, forestry, they work uh, analyt in analytics, consulting, ad advisory, coaching, mentoring, demonstrating, and knowledge transfer skill. And uh, CNVP helps uh, partners to strengthen their technical capacity at central decentralized level. I will mention here that. Uh, it, maybe the last 10 years, uh, our main focus wa was uh, to straighten the private uh, forest ownership because in the past time they had a lot of uh, problem with uh, the ownership and they didn't have uh, a right to manage their own forest. So it was on one way occupied by by the state uh, by the state so we succeed uh, to change to do some changes in the forestry law regarding the property and uh, and uh, management we uh, they were organized uh, in the balkan countries as uh, in national association of private forest owners and at the moment uh, exists one uh, uh, Balkan uh, net network where they they are communicating, working, and implementing the project together. Uh, our, our project uh, where we are, which we are working at the moment that are more uh, more interesting to be presented uh, is at the moment we are working on. Uh, integrated forest management and along the Dream River Basin. This uh, project has a um, main, uh, main goal to, uh, to work on sediment reduction through integrating forest management and uh, uh, in, at the same time to increase the, to increase the income uh, in, in the local community, of the local community. Uh, other project is sustainable use of nature resources for transborder border resource economic development of protected areas in North Macedonia and Albania. 
activities that are taking place are in uh, national parks in uh, in uh, in Macedonia national park uh, uh, Shara and Mavrovo as well as in Albania national park uh, Albania Alps and Korak Porednik and the main objective objective is to uh, is promoting sustainable use of natural resources through the provision and uh, support to local communities to create a better socio-economic life and human uh, harmony with nature. After that, uh, the, is the project CSO section for climate. Uh, through, this is the second phase of the project, uh, project uh, in, and it's implemented only in uh, North Macedonia, uh, where we are building the climate co national climate coalition of CSOs. Uh, increasing the, the knowledge of the local uh, local NGOs to in the the part of uh, climate change in uh, different different sectors uh, uh, connected uh, to to climate change and at the same time increasing the public awareness about uh, uh, about the importance of uh, about the, the importance of low carbon uh, economies and green tra uh, transformation, and the to, and the importance to build uh, public pressure on the institution to ensure uh, to ensure uh, this development through policy and program changes. Also, we were part in uh, pre preparation of. Uh, the new law on climate action and the climate strategy. Other in, uh, project is sustainable use of nature resources for environmental economic development uh, that is implemented in Kosovo, uh, empowering women for uh, uh, non-timber forest uh, products, the, uh, developing uh, development of Prespa region. Also, it's regional project uh, for implemented in Albania and Kosovo, and also working on local economic development uh, projects. So all these projects are- I'm, with... I'm sorry for interruption, uh, yes. Christina. Uh, uh, we have one more minute for the presentation. Yes, uh, uh, yeah, I'm on the end, yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I wanted to, to, I mentioned this uh, few, a few projects, but all of our activities and work are, uh, Connected, as I said previously, uh, the main focus is the is the forest forestry sector, sustainable uh, sustainable use of nature resources, uh, sustain uh, sustainable forest management. Also, we are working with uh, forest certification. To don't take time, I will go on the end. So at the moment. Very, uh, regarding the job opportunities at the moment, we don't have some open uh, position, but I believe that uh, the next month we will have uh, several. Also, you can visit uh, our website. It's, uh, you can see it uh, on the end of the, the slide. And uh, also we, some, uh, we have uh, internship. Uh, we are providing internship and uh, volunteering opportunities. So if someone is interested, we are open to co uh, cooperate. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, I will now ask uh, Sara Uskiano to present EFI. The floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Shimon. So uh, let me share the screen here. Um, you can see the presentation, right? Yes. Yes. There. You see the, the proper one. Okay, perfect. So yeah, um, hello everybody. Um, I am Sarut Kiano and I'm gonna explain you a little bit uh, what do we do at the European Forest Institute in this uh, six minutes. 
Um, so the vision of the European uh, Forest Institute is uh, to, to build a world where forests significantly contribute to a sustainable well-being. And the, how do we keep this vision in, in our minds is with this statement that connecting knowledge to action that personally, I really like it. So our strategy is based in three pillars. We have the bioeconomy program, governance program, and resilience program. The bioeconomy program is where the, we focus on, on the products that we can obtain for the forests. So the people working there are researching and uh, like what we can obtain from, from, the, from our forests, not only timber production, but how adapted to the new um, services that we are needing as a society, what we can do. Then we have the resilience program. That is where I work. And uh, here we, we, what we do is more about knowing how, how our forests work and how we can uh, build a more productive uh, forests and base for bioeconomy program. Uh, at the same time, make them the more resistant, understood as a way to be um, able to adapt the forests after a distur disturbance and uh, let them be an, a functional ecosystem and also help be more resilient, understood as the way that they can keep working after uh, a disturbance. And finally, we have the governance pro program. People working here are more focused on how all this uh, knowledge that we provide in resilience program and by economy program, how we can compile it and then build guides for the policymakers later on in across Europe. So with all this, as I said, that we try to connect knowledge, knowledge to action, like it's not about just creating knowledge, it's about apply this knowledge to reality. And that is what the most exciting thing that uh, I found that we do in European Forest Institute. So what we do is, is uh, maximize the, the research that we, that we do in forests, and at the same time that we are trying to create a greater impact into society. So we can create a, a greater awareness of what is happening uh, in the world and why, why it's so urgent to, to build uh, a sustainable world. As uh, some results of some uh, actions that you can, uh, that you can see that we do are these um, guides that they are that you can freely uh, download and where the, the policy makers based on, for example, the forest-based climate change mitigation and adaptation in Europe, key questions on forest in the U European Union and Russia, Russian forest and climate change. So this is very uh, what we do, but then let's see how or where we are, right? Or how do we work? So, Right now, uh, there are 30 countries uh, sponsoring us, and we have uh, 30, 130 members uh, within our organization in that they are across 41 countries. So as you see, is way spread across Europe. And also not only across Europe, we are also in Canada, Chile, Georgia, Malaysia, and uh, how many are we? So currently we are about 145 employees staff, but there are more people around. We have a lot of trainees and uh, yeah. So I would say that we are even like 200 something. We are from uh, 34 nationalities and the average of uh, the age is uh, like, as um, Elena said at the, at the beginning of this, uh, of this session is a little bit better or, or a little bit more optimistic because we are not in the mid 40s or late 40s, but in the early 40s of our league. <laughs> and, um, but then gender balance, there we are doing very good. We are like, I'm really proud to see these numbers that we are equally represented. 
And as uh, Elaine also pointed it out at the beginning, to be a forestry sector, I think that this is really um, encouraging. You can find us, uh, the main uh, office is in Joensu, Finland. And also we have offices in Brussels, in Bonn, where I am, and Barcelona, and uh, most uh, recently in Rome. So you just can check all these places. And hopefully next year, we're gonna open a new office in uh, UK. So this is just a starting. This is a little bit the numbers, how the European Force Institution uh, Institute um, get funded. So as you see, it's mainly based on European projects. And uh, yeah, so, and as you can see in the last years is when we are growing more because the society is getting more awareness that we need to, to, to invest in our force to be able to keep the, um, to preserve our natural world. If you like to, if you, if you would like to join, so you can always join as a traineeship. In fact, our current uh, director, he started as a, with a train trainee, as a trainee at the EFI. It's a, look, now he is uh, our director. So there you are. Also there are, if you are interested maybe on, I don't know, doing your PhD in a university, you can always talk with the EFI and become a junior researcher uh, here. And of course the EFI provides a lot of grants uh, for mobility and also for different courses as for example, this one young leadership program uh, that it happens. This year is gonna happen in September in Barcelona, for example. So you can always check our website. Uh, there is where the, the, the calls are, are open. But also you can always um, check or follow us on LinkedIn where you can see there is, is a lot of um, what is uh, is quite uh, vivid there. They, they will, they, we will post all the, the positions that you can get. And also you can reach us through Twitter. You can check our YouTube channel. And always I would say that the most efficient thing is also to, to reach us personally. I will say like, just do a little bit of research, who is working in the program or wherever you would like to, to be part of and uh, write them personally. The, the, email are, the email are there. So just uh, reach us and uh, yeah, happy to, happy to see you there, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, the presentation and for taking the time. And uh, so we will now uh, head the word uh, to FSC. Thank you. I am sharing my screen right now. And uh, please let me know if you can see my screen clearly. Can you see my screen, please? Yes, it's coming. Yes. Now yes. it's there, yeah. OK, perfect. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Brilliant Jiko. I am the communications assistant here at the headquarters of the Forest Worship Council in Bonn. And then on the side and observing is our senior uh, research man relations manager, Dr. Marion Carmen. And so I would quickly run us through the agenda for today. I uh, would quickly go through um, FSE's mission. Uh, you would get to understand what FSE is, what we do a bit of a look into our organizational structure, how our system works, and then um, why you see the FSE logo on products and labels. And of course, we will delve into why many of you are here today, some career and engagement opportunities with the Forest Worship Council, ASI, and some certification bodies that we work with. And perhaps if there's a little bit of time, you can drop the questions into the chats and then we'll be able to move forward from there. And so in the next slide, we can see that um, there is the FSE logo here, which I believe many of you have seen before. And then there is an FSE certified forest in West Africa. Now, as we move more into the presentation, you will get to understand that we rely on forests a lot for our materials in our daily lives. And so we have to ensure that they are sustainably sourced and the materials continually 
are renewable and ensure that we are in harmony with nature. And so that is why FSC came up and that is why FSC was established over 25 years ago with a mission to promote environmentally sound, socially beneficial and economically viable management of the world's forests. Now, the FSC network exists all around the world. We have regional offices in Latin America, North America, Africa, and we also have the FSC Indigenous Foundation that was set up to also ensure that the indigenous people whose lives depend on the forest are also protected. And so this is a quick run through of the network that we have here in FSC. And so who are the main actors in FSC and, and how does our system work? Now, FSC develops the standards and uh, ASI ensures that the certification bodies that accredit certificates to certificate holders are well monitored and exercises oversight over them. And then it works with the certification bodies and ensures that we are also ISO compliant in the, in the sense that um, every sustainability certification that we offer is compliant with the rules that ISO has also set. And so these are some of the ways that FSC ensures this. And if you look at the structure that is over here, you can see an infographic that shows how um, the standards are developed. ASI ensures this, and then the certification bodies are able to issue certificates to the forests that are being certified in order for you to be able to see the FSC label on any forest products in your supermarkets and uh, you know anywhere that you spot the logo. And in the end of the day, it moves from the standard to the verification, to the certificate being issued, and then the end result is that we see these logos on our products. And if you want further details on what these logos mean and how um, they are formulated, you can visit our website, our social media channels, and there are external videos over there. Now, what are the career opportunities that exist in FSC? Now, I would like to emphasize that even though FSC International employs over 400 uh, staff around the world, there are also certification bodies and ASI that provides these assurances that forest tree students can become forest managers over there and there are also other employment and, uh, opportunities and so the opportunities does not only lie within FSE International and its network partners but then the uh, forest management and certificate holders and then the certification bodies as well and so you would see that we have over 150 staff from around the world I am originally from Ghana Marion joining us is um, our senior staff from Germany and um, my team, I work in the marketing and communications team and then we have over, I think, 10 countries coming from this country as well and um, from um, around the world as well. And so we have, there are opportunities for direct employment with FSC, the certification bodies, you could become auditors with ASI or through, uh, have employment opportunities with the certificate holders. Now, there are a lot of job openings. Unfortunately, student assistants are limited to students in universities in Germany, but there are assistant positions, FSC employees from around the world. And so there are officer positions, manager positions that are opened on our website. You can subscribe to our newsletter from our website to keep updated on activities that are going on. And then also, yes, as here's a quick tip on what we look out for when we are looking for prospective applicants for jobs, a good knowledge in forest management and certification. Of course, being multilingual gives you an advantage, but it is not compulsory. We mostly work in English, very good computer skills, ability to work in high pressure environments, being goal oriented. And I think a key skill that um, the previous presenter, Sarah, gave some recommendations on is uh, being able to um, you know, go through traineeships and then tailoring your CV to be able to match the roles that um, you are applying for. And in order to be able to gain more knowledge on what FSC does and forest management and certification, there are some training programs and there are webinars, podcasts, and interviews with experts on our website through our YouTube channel that you could also learn a lot from. And of course, our certification bodies also have free training programs. One of the certification bodies is preferred by nature. And so please feel free to reach out to their website and then gain a lot of learning materials on how we are protecting the world's forests. And so thank you very much. And uh, I'll be dropping my email in the box. And so feel free to send me a message or Marion a message if you have any questions. 
you very much. We will uh, leave the questions uh, for the end of the session. Yeah. I don't know if Marion uh, wants to add something or. Uh... Uh, no need. This was very good. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for the presentation. And we will move uh, to the last presenting presenter, and it's uh, Verli Kornat uh, from uh, the Eustafor. And so the floor is yours. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I will do the same and share my screen now. If this is going to work, it is. So hi, I am uh, Fierle. I'm sorry, it's a Flemish name. <laughs> I am the office manager of Eustafel, which is the European State Forest Association. And I partly also work for the European Forestry House, which I will just briefly explain as well later on. Um, now, what is used to for? Um, we were established, as you can see, in 2006. We represent uh, state forests, companies, enterprises all over Europe, also pan-European, not only European uh, Union, but only um, companies that work with sustainable forest management and that use sustainable wood production. So sustainable is really the word here. We have for the moment 37 uh, members, sorry, in 26 European countries. And since this year, we are very happy to have the Ukrainian state forest as our member as well. Um, so in brief, all used to four members together. They make up about a third of the whole of in the EU forest areas. They manage about 8 million hectares of protected forest. And they have just under 8 million hectares of forest in the Natura 2000 areas. We, they all together <laughs> employ about 100,000 people. And here's the say sustainability again, only six, 60 to 70% of the annual growth is harvested so that there is an increasing development of the forests. What's our vision? We are the voice of all state owned forestry in Europe, the EU and also pan Europe. Um, our most important mission is that we want to help our member organizations to develop their forest in a sustainable way, they, that they can share any know-how, any experiences amongst each other. Um, main activities, so policy making in the EU which is we have direct contact with European Parliament, European Council and the Commission. And we share with them practical knowledge, experience of all our members. Well, we try to. <laughs> um, we also lobby, of course. I mean, we are a lobby. We lobby for the state forest interests. We work together with other stakeholders, of which a few of them are also in our European Forestry House. So that means like also landowners, forest-based industry, research, anything, even NGOs. Um, we um, provide also, again, a networking uh, platform so that all the used to form members can exchange experience, ask questions, um, whatever they need, the members can reply to each other. Um, my colleagues, the policy advisors, they analyze any legal framework that exists, um, any policy processes, initiatives of the European Union, and they um, focus again on sustainable development. As I said, sustainable, sustainable is really the word here. Um, on the basis of contacts with members, we my colleagues, that is, develop uh, positions on any issue that might come, that has ar arisen in the European e Union or that might even come. Um, 
also active participation in uh, different initiatives all related to forest in any of the EU institutions, but also um, other actors like other stakeholders. Um, we are also a focal point, point um, to provide guidance of rel uh, on relevant EU legislation and policies. We facilitate know-how exchange. Uh, we own four more members on topics and issues that are related to forests. And we build up an, a lot of networking with other stakeholders that are situated in Brussels. And also research and innovation is important to us. Um, and then the European Forestry House. Um, we are situated, it's actually, the, the Forestry House was um, founded by Eustafor and by CEPF, or the Confederation of the Private Forest Owners, in 2007. Um, the house is um, perfectly situated at the Square Luxembourg in Brussels, just opposite the big Altiero Spinelli building of the European Parliament. So really in the heart of, of the EU quarter. Um, the forestry house is also recognized by the EU institutions and the stakeholders as a really good center of expertise and competence relating to um, forestry. Um, it's also um, very important for uh, we also do events, workshops, together with other stakeholders. We, um, we have in the house uh, different, apart from use to foreign CPF, there are a couple of other forest related uh, organizations, such as, yes, EFI, the liaison office uh, has its office in our house. There's also the forest technology platform. There's also a project actually of EFI, EFI the Africa project. These people are also in our building. And there is um, an office of PFC um, located in our building. Um, for the moment, we have just hired another, um, another policy advisor for our team. He's going to start next week, but you never know. There's always things happening. So keep on checking our LinkedIn, for example, or our website, because um, things move. Um, on the other hand, we love, we, we really are very open and welcoming to work with trainees. Mind you, we are a <laughs> very small uh, association. There's only three and me a half uh, of people. So the budget is not very big, but what we can offer is knowledge. We will share with the trainees any knowledge that we can, um, that we have, and we'll teach them anything they want. So if you're interesting, interested in a traineeship with us, please contact me. I will put my uh, email address as well in the um, in the chat and just contact me. Let me know what your interests are, and then we'll see what we can do for you. Voila, that was it. <laughs> Thank you very much for the presentation. And we have one or two minutes left uh, till the end of the session before we have to move to uh, to the uh, main room. So we have uh, time for one, maybe two questions, and there are already some in the chat. Uh, so the first one was uh, from uh, Seun. Um, so if I mean mispronounce it, the question is for EFI and FSC. Uh, how can a forestry graduate be positioned for a job offer in these organizations and what skill sets are required? Also, can I carry out my internship at uh, the EFI or FSC during this summer as an Erasmus traineeship scholarship winner? Uh, if the traineeship it's possible. I like to connect and communicate with the right person here. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's for me, right? Yes. Um. So as I said, 
my suggestion is uh, check on LinkedIn, uh, follow, and so there's always you can. Um, I think that you can say like, uh, please let me know when the, there are some news regarding the different uh, organizations as it is this one. I know there are a couple of the uh, open um, open positions right now. And, uh, and as I said, like if you are really interested on a specific program, uh, I encourage you to enter to the website, check who is working there and contact that person and uh, let, let it know that uh, you're interested on, on working uh, in there. Uh, thank you. And the same question is for FSC. OK, um, thank you for the question again. I think um, uh, Marion is here. She has also been working a lot with students who, for instance, have research in relation to forestry that um, FSC is involved with. And so we have always been open to engage with uh, students. And uh, of course, uh, we are very diverse. And so in terms of the job opportunities that are available on our website, policy officer positions, um, communications positions, um, integrity positions, uh, we are always open to have discussions. Uh, and of course, our LinkedIn pages and our newsletters are also one of the platforms that we used to engage, um, you know, stakeholders and anyone who is interested in FSC and the work that we do. But um, please always feel free to reach out to us on LinkedIn. There are very nice people that work in the organization. And so, yeah, that, that would be my answer for the question. Mm, Thank you very brilliant. much. Brilliant, you and... have an echo. Hi, um, but I just wanted to add two small things. Um, brilliant touched upon two different topics. Um, one is, as He's right. As research coordinator, I'm working a lot with um, with students, with PhD students, with your professors. Um, but this is research related about FSE or in the forest sector, and not necessarily about jobs within FSE. On the other hand, um, the if the people, the audience here, they are not necessarily only students looking for student jobs. But um, among you, there are also PhD students and, and people who, who graduated already. And here, Brilliant is very right. We First of all, if you're looking for something, make up your mind, be, be a bit specific of what you are looking for and, and apply. And also have a look at our website because we, we, have, uh, we have 140 people in Bonn and we have a quite high, stuff turnover but so there are always vacancies and and new job opportunities coming up and so the other thing is and, and brilliant mentioned that we are working with with the accreditation people with assurance services international sorry <clears throat> with asi and um, with certification bodies they are independent from fse but they also have a lot of job opportunities for people coming fresh from the university. That's it. Thank you very much for answering. And since uh, we are uh, we ran out of time, uh, all the emails of the presenters are in the chat, or we can send it also later uh, in the chat when we are uh, with everyone uh, in the main room. Uh, but uh, I would like to ask you now uh, to uh, get back to the main room and uh, you can uh, reach out to the presenters uh, later presently for uh, any further questions. And thank you again to all the presenters for presenting. Thank you. Thank you, Shima. Thank you. Thank you.